Okay. Any questions before we proceed? So we were discussing about how to open an application or a session, right? Different ways we saw, right? Uh, the thing is, first one we saw with the menu, how to open a session. Correct. And uh, sorry, with that command slash O, we can open a session. And next one with the navigation, we can open. And next one with the standard toolbar, we can open. And next one, uh, did I have shown shortcut key, control plus N button, control plus N button. Correct. So four ways we can open the sessions. So out of this, any questions? Out of this, any questions? No. Okay. Yeah. So next one, we have one more option. For example, So this is very important. I can say that by practice, we will do this. Number of end users will follow. So for example, I have opened one particular screen. For example, I am in opening FB50 screen. FB50 application screen. You need not to remember as of now, any transaction codes, but just I would like to show you. Uh, for example, Okay, see, see here. This is the application where we are doing FB50 posting of GL, so posting of an entry, general entry watcher, what we call in tally. So here I have already opened one application. Then I want to open another application. I want to open another application. For example, here I have mentioned, write it down, opening a new session, if possible, write it down, opening a new session opening a new session without closing, without closing, without closing existing screen, without closing existing screen or 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 application, existing application, existing application. See here, how many sessions are opened here? How many sessions are opened? One. One. Only one. What is the transaction code? What is the application? FB 50. Yeah. So I want to open yeah. one more application without closing this. Without closing this, I would like to open one more application. So whenever you want to open any new application without closing the existing application, then, okay, slash backslash O. Okay, so it's nothing but O is nothing but it will open a new session without closing an existing session. So for example, FBL, this is one more application, FBL 3N. I'll explain while doing GL module, what is this FBL 3N, FB 50 and other stuff. But meanwhile, just I would like to show you this. So FBL 3N, this is an application, new application. Okay, and I would like to uh, open in another application screen, not in the existing screen. So whenever we want to open a new screen, so we need to type it as in slash O as we saw last time, last week, and we need to give the extension of the transaction code, application code. Okay, so press enter, press enter. So you can see here. So this is GL account line item display. So without opening, without opening, you can see now two screens. The existing skill already is there that is FB60 and one more screen is opened here FBL 3N. If I want to open one more screen called F-07 outgoing payment, GL outgoing payment. So what I need to do, how many sessions we can open at a time? Maximum six. six, six. Okay. So here you can see here slash O slash O. Okay. F dash zero seven. So what is the functionality of slash O? It will open, it will open a new session without closing the existing session. So now F dash zero seven, this is an application. Press enter. See here. Post outgoing payments. So here you can see three sessions at a time. One, two, 
3. Is this clear? Any questions on this particular step? What is the functionality of slash O? Already we saw slash O and every uh, command. So you can write syntax, syntax slash O without space transaction code. Slash O transaction code. Just write it down. So this one would mean is uh, it will open a new window with a new transaction code. Right? Correct. Exactly. So like that, how many transactions we can uh, we can open application? Uh, that's six applications with any other transact any transaction. Clear? Any questions on this? Any questions? Okay. So one more. So write down one more step. Opening new session, new session or new application by closing by closing the existing application by closing the existing application by closing the existing application. So syntax here slash n slash n transaction code slash n transaction code. What I'll do is first I'll close this. Okay, now how many applications are open? How many? One. Only one. What is the application we have opened? Which application is this? FB50. 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 So here I want to open new application by closing this. By closing, you can, okay, by closing this, I would like to open. On a top of this system, I need to open one more application. For example, if I say, so slash O will open a new by retaining the existing application. But here slash O slash O FPL 3N. I'm saying, sorry, slash N. It's not slash O slash N. What is slash N? What is the functionality of slash N is? It will close the existing application, whatever existing application FB50 is there. It will close that and it will open a new application, whatever transactions we are going to give. So here I'm giving slash n FBL 3n. So the difference between slash o and slash n. Slash o will open a new session, new screen without closing the existing session. But what slash n will perform? Slash n will perform it will close the existing application and open a new application, whatever command we will give. So here you can see, again, I'm reiterating how many sessions are open now? Only one, right? That is FB60 application. Now you can see, press enter. See here. So FB L3N session is open, GL account line item display, correct? Now you can see how many sessions are there. Only one session. FB50. This particular application FB60 is closed on that itself. It got opened GL account line item display, right? I want to open one more on this only. I want to close this application. I want to open outgoing payments. So same slash n F dash zero seven slash n F dash zero seven press enter. So outgoing payment application has been opened out application screen is open, but you can see the existing only one application is open. Any questions here? Slash n and slash o. Naveen, in case like we are working on three applications, okay. this will close only the one where we are entering. Exactly. Exactly. Right? exactly. Okay. Not all three. If you can see here, if I say here, slash o incoming payments i'll open slash o f dash zero six i'm typing slash o what it will perform add a screen, add screen. yeah another screen slash o it will open it will see here this is outgoing payment that is incoming payment see you can see 
slash o f dash zero six incoming payment and next one this is outgoing payment fine so same thing if i slash and if i outgoing payment slash n again i am doing fb50 see outgoing payment screen will be closed and on that it did i open slash o uh, slash n only right so gl account document but the other screen it remains the same post incoming payments is this clear the functionality of slash n slash o yes sir next one so write down the syntax for this okay and after this close the empty sessions okay how to close the sessions we can close the sessions in three different ways we can close the sessions whatever open the sessions are there those sessions we can open in three different ways first one first one select select end session select end session option from system menu from system menu from system menu so what does it mean for example i am opening few more i am opening few more sessions total six sessions generate okay so i am opening 2 3 you can see here total how many sessions are open One, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. I'll open one more session. Now you can see total one, two, three, four, and five. So I would like to close this particular application, but this particular screen. Okay. So we have different ways we can close the session. So what it is showing? System and end session. With this is with menu bar. So here you can go. Systems, okay. Systems and close GUI window. In some screens, it will show end session or close GUI window. Close GUI window. So press close GUI window. Now you can see six out of six. There will be available only five. One, two, three, four, five. Clear? Any questions? So whatever session you will try to close, that particular session it will be get closed. Okay, next one. Second option. Closing the session. Closing the session with the transaction code. Closing the session with the transaction code. So slash i slash i in command field. Slash i in command field. Slash i in the command field. So here you can type here slash i in the command field. So press enter. That's it. You can see the session has been closed. Earlier it was five, one. Now it is available only four. Means whatever session you want to close, you can type slash i. Okay, so the fourth session I am closing now. So slash i, without going uh, menu bar directly, we can type here slash i and press enter. Now only three sessions will be available. One, two, three. Clear? Any questions? Any questions? Yes. No. Okay. All okay. Okay. Next one. Next one. Closing the application. Closing the application. Closing the application. 
with windows option with windows option with windows option okay with windows option so here this is the windows option close button normally how we close excel or window uh, word or whatever doc powerpoint so here we can click on close so three sessions are open if i click on this one more session will be closed so here only two are available any questions in closing the sessions and opening the sessions slash o slash and difference in three different ways we can close it any questions here yes no 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 okay no. next one logging of sap system okay so and one more thing before that i would like to tell you whatever may be the screen whatever may be the application whatever may be the screen two things are common two menu bars two menus are common the one is these can be get changed this menu is document edit go to settings these can be changed okay but but the system and help will be common for any screen okay for example if i take same slide we have already opened with fp60 right see here system and menu so these two are common in any of the screens this may be get changed if you in few screens but you will find these two options these two menus bars these two menu bars are common for any screen and any application just write it down for your benefit just write it down in any application in any application or any session in sap in sap system menu system menu and help menu help menu are the standard menus system menu and help menu are the standard menus the other menus the other menus may change may change application to application the other menus may change application to application is this clear any questions on this uh, will you mean to say uh, like if you see in the settings uh, beside that uh, there might be any fields that is going to be changed right yeah. here it will be get changed according to application to application okay document edit go to settings kind of things it may change but majority it will be there but again i'm telling you the application to application it may get changed whatever may be the module again i'm telling you whatever may be the not only fi module if you take mm module or any module okay these two will not be this these two will be the same it will not going to change you in any module menu bar you will find these two options system menu and help menu is that clear and remaining yeah. will may get changed fine any okay. questions yeah so do we need to remember this absolutely not but why again i am reiterating for you people in the sense so this is the point where we need to stress with the client stress to the client these two are the common standard hope you got my point yes no okay yes yes now next one log off 
select log of means i said how to close the application sap application completely so select log of option select log of option select log of option from from system menu system menu system menu to come out of from to come out of from sap come out of from sap when we select log of option when we select log of option it will show it will show a pop up message a pop up message a pop up message as a pop up message as unsaved data unsaved data will be lost unsaved data will be lost do you want to log off do you want to log off with two options with two options yes and no to log off to log off we need to select yes option we need to select yes option okay so same like your windows ms word or ms excel whatever we see if 10 applications are open then if you are clicking on yes uh, close okay then it will show it as an do you want to save the document or not correct so in the same way for example i'm i have opened four applications one four applications i have opened see one two three four so here it is a log of option so click on system so total four application screens are open right so here you can see log off so here if you click on log off the, all the script it will come out of from entire sap so it is asking same whatever i mentioned unsaved data will be lost do you want to log off click on yes button if you click on yes that it will come out from sap completely sap see here no screens nothing clear at a time we can open any number of screens directly by pressing log off okay so next again i am logging in So one more application I'm opening. 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 one more application and normal application i'm opening okay so total how many i have opened here one two three four five and six so if i log out of what it will show system log off then it will show a message unsaved data will be lost do you want to save it right yes or do you want to log off yes or no we know that now there is one more option with the command field in the command field we can close the application write down that so six screens are opened here. So right on to close all the sessions to close all the sessions at a time at a time. Right on transaction code slash N E X 
स्लैश एन ई एक्स दिस ट्रांजेक्शन कोड दिस ट्रांजेक्शन कोड दिस ट्रांजेक्शन कोड क्लोज ऑल ओपन एप्लीकेशन ओपन एप्लीकेशन विदउट विदउट शोइंग द वॉर्निंग मैसेज मीन्स वी कैन ओपन वी कैन क्लोज ऑल द स्क्रीन बट वेन आई से स्लैश एन ई एक्स in command field then it will not prompt this particular warning message unsaved data will be lost do you want to save it so you can see here backslash n ex slash n ex are you able to see this yes no yes yes yeah. so slash n ex so what happens how many applications are opened here One, two, three, four, five, and six. So at the time, it will close all the sessions. That's it. You can see it. It's not shown this particular warning message, and everything was closed. Any questions on this? So we can close with menu bar. We can close with transaction code command field. command so, to close all the sessions at a time slash an ex yes sir go ahead so so it will be mostly used when we are trying to log off the system rather closing Correct, each exactly. and every uh, is a six yeah. sessions you want yeah. to open one after the other instead of that you can close slash an ex okay it will come out of from complete sap okay any questions here so the most important write down put a heading as an application attribute sap application field attributes so again i need to log in so i'm opening one uh, this one which will have a many fields so you can see any of uh, uh, thing any screen we have a these are called fields whatever you can see here the boxes those are called as in fields okay so i would like to explain the attributes of each field you are able to see this fields right i would like to explain each and every field what exactly it is so write down sap application field attributes so any screen you will have the same attributes so write down any sap application any sap application will have will have the following attributes the following field attributes you can write it down the following field attributes so first one first most important one text field text field text field okay so here text field text field is an optional field is an optional field and it's not a mandatory field it's not a mandatory field without giving any information or data without giving any information or data we can move we can move to the next fields we can move to the next fields so here see so here document number it is saying it's a number correct but here reference number reference document header text right clearing text right cross company code sorry cross company code 
so here amount bank charges right text value value date so here these are considered as these are considered as text fields these are considered as an text fields without giving it's an optional field by default sap standard application provided text fields as a optional fields understood text fields are considered as an optional fields without giving any information in this particular fields in this particular fields we can go we can move to the next field we can move to the next field is this clear any questions so text fields are optional fields in sap standard field attributes remember that so any questions here before i proceed to the next so navin uh, yeah. how can we recognize it is a text field uh, by seeing that uh, attribute there yes see i'll explain that if i after showing matter uh, attributes of next option mandatory then you will understand this okay okay so next one write down mandatory fields mandatory fields in sap applications in sap applications few fields are few fields are mandatory fields mandatory fields without giving without giving information without giving information or data without giving information or data in the field the system the system will not allow us the system will not allow us to move next field for example see here so mandatory fields normally what we will have us see here you will find the tick mark on the top here 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 right so what does it indicates wherever it is the right tick mark on the top left hand side the top left hand side clear the tick marks so which indicates that it's a mandatory field it's a mandatory field without giving the data we can't go ahead if i'm trying to enter you can see it will show an error message on the bottom fill all required entry fields required entry fields is nothing but a mandatory fields and what are the mandatory fields here right so what is a, what are the mandatory fields here in this particular screen in this particular application which are all uh, in tick box right what are the date document date document date uh, account account company code currency company rate code, currency rate clear yeah so these are mandatory fields without giving any information or data into this particular fields the system will not allow us to move forward and it will show this particular message okay fill in all required entry fields right so by looking at this now you can understand what are mandatory fields okay leave it about text fields but are you able to understand what are the mandatory fields in this particular screen yes yes sir by looking at that right next next uh, navin it is not showing in our sap version which we have got it sorry sorry i didn't get you it is not showing in sap version which we have got it sap version you need to go in you need to check system huh? status in the status it no, looks Yes, that is fine. I am having the same version, uh -huh. banker, but this is not showing. There is no tick in any of the column. No, it will be there. Mandatory fields will be there like that. But yeah, it I will be there in it. any version. Again, I am telling you. Got my point? Yeah, but I cannot see even a single tick. 
which which screen you are using same bache hai gui version which you no, i am asking which application you are using is it what what transaction you are using post order payments or can you share your screen uh like should i share the picture in the whatsapp group uh, no problem uh, we will see later then is that fine okay okay yeah that's okay yeah next one it will be there however fine next one uh -huh. these are called mandatory fields and date fields this is another important field so what i'll do i'll cover the date field part later because it's a little huge okay we will discuss next one first i'll discuss about drop down drop down fields what do you mean by drop down fields in the sense for example see here we have a few drop down options here you can see here type is a drop down account to type is a drop down so what do you mean by drop down so if you click here this is a document type so if you click on here it will show already default document types which is sap provided so the complete list it will show understood this is called drop down so where you can see here already existing some uh, data will be exist if you click on that then it will show the other options according to our requirement we need to select for example i would like to select sa sa clear so drop down in the sense it will be show the list of predefined standard items which is provided by sap that it will display same time you can see here true drop true oh sorry two drop down fields are there here one is account type that is nothing but type and account type one is document type and account type you can see here if you click here again you can for find magnifier button search button so you can see here understood everyone this is yes asset customers vendors material and gl accounts these are the fields so wherever by default it is there data so whether you can find the search button then which means that if you click here which means that this is a drop down list drop down field so how many drop down fields are there in this particular screen i think two two or only two only two, two. only two only clear you can find out so by looking at this particular screen are you able to make out which are a mandatory field and which are the drop down fields yes no yes yes sir yeah next one next field radio button field radio buttons radio buttons radio buttons right down radio buttons in radio buttons option we can select one option at a time we can select one option at a time at a time okay so here you can see here in this particular so these are called radio buttons so you can select none or amount see how many i can able to select here only one option right if i can select none then it will be deactivated other if i select document number other will be amount none will not be get selected and same time posting date so others are deactivated dunning area others hope you got understand right so what does it mean if you want to generate any specific report of outgoing payment how you want to do outgoing payment as per amount wise document number wise posting date wise dunning area or any other options okay so we can select only one at a time not all or we can't select all 
is this clear now you understood what are so out of this particular screen what are the mandatory fields what are the drop down fields and what are the radio buttons fields yes or no yes 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 right so next one check box check boxes check boxes okay the check we can select we can select one check box or multiple check boxes or all the check boxes at a time one check box or multiple check box or all the check boxes at a time all the check boxes at a time is this clear so here what does it mean in the sense so i want to generate a report according to distribute to age and same time one more report i would like to generate automatic search and i would like see here i can i am able to select one two and invoice summary okay and next one we can select other accounts so like this here in radio buttons we can select only one option but whenever we call it as in check boxes we can select one or more than one or all clear according to the client requirement how they want to generate the report according to that they can select so i want i would like to say uh, i don't want i would like to see only automatic search and standard outstanding invoices or open invoices so here you can see one two three i have selected and other two i have ignored clear we can select one or multiple or all anything according to the requirement what kind of report we want to generate in outgoing payment so don't go with what reports we are just i'm telling you in the check boxes we can select either one or two or multiple or all together but in radio buttons is that option available can we select one two three three options at a time no we cannot we cannot clear so this is the difference between a check box and this one radio buttons now you understood in this particular screen what are the mandatory fields okay and what are the check boxes and what are the radio buttons and what are the drop down fields yes or no yes yes ma'am yeah. next go ahead with the most important date date field write down why i am saying important important in the sense see here we have number of dates document date posting date clear our uh, next one we have uh, one more date value date right so lot of date system date right what is the difference between each and every date that we need to understand what is the difference between a value date and a document date any idea what exactly the value date is how it is differ from your posting date and document date uh value date uh, is kind of a uh, end of month end date it no. is considered as no. posting date you can take it right month end date mm -hmm. correct yeah yeah then what is it the value date, date is irrelevant to your uh, end date month end date or quarter end date or year end okay. date okay yeah that is a different thing Relevant. So the posting date. Realization date. Sorry. Realization date. What do you mean by realization date? Okay, let's say value date. Let's bank accounts mainly we use a uh, uh, value date. So uh -huh. the date which ah uh, ah uh, amount is getting cleared in system. So that's called value date. Yeah, I I'll explain. I'll explain. So each and every date. So just write it down. First one, date field. date field 
there are different there are different types of date field there are different types of date fields okay for example write down write down on 29th 6 we have purchased material write down purchased material from xyz supplier on a credit basis so what we have done on 29th 6 we have purchased material from XYZ supplier on a credit basis. It's not a cash transaction. So billing address and shipping address is Hyderabad office. Plant is in BHEL. Plant is in BHEL and office is in Hyderabad. Okay. So what vendor has sent is, what vendor has done is, vendor has sent an invoice. So we have purchased goods on, goods on 29th of June. So normally we went to showroom, we purchased something and showroom will deliver the goods to us, to our residential address or whatever address we have mentioned. So it will not happen on 29th evening we purchased, we have placed the order. So what they have done is the vendor has, vendor has sent, okay. What vendor has sent invoice through courier? What vendor has bill has been sent? Vendor has sent the invoice bill through a courier and received invoice on 30th of June. We purchased the goods and serve goods on 29th of June. Vendor sent an invoice on 30th of June. Due to some reason, what we need to do? Our accounts payable department received the invoice on 30th June. Correct. In that particular day cycle, they have received. But due to some reason, due to some reason, they the entry is not possible on the same day. Means it has to be booked in the system. It has to be recorded in the system on 30th of June. On 30th of June 2023. But due to some reason, the entry has not booked. The entry has not booked in the system on 30th of June. And it is booked on, okay, and it is not and same day, and it is booked on 1-7, very next day, it has been booked, okay. So we have we have purchased the goods on 29th of June, and vendor sent the invoice on 1st of, uh, 30th of June, but normally whenever we receive the invoice, we need to book, but due to some reason, book in the sense I record the transaction in the books of accounts. But due to some reason, due to some reason, we are not able to record the transaction on the same day, on the same day. What we have done is we have recorded the transaction next day. That is nothing but 1st July, 1st July. Okay. So what does it mean actually? So let me change the dates here. What is these different dates we are going to call actually? Okay, so here on 29th, on 29.6, on 29.6, whatever we purchased, whatever document we purchased, clear, that date we call it as a document date because in the vendor system, they have made a sale on 29th, 6, 29th, 6, 29, 6, 2023, clear. According to vendor billing on the bill, they will mention the sales process has been done on 29th 6, 2023. Clear? So this particular date means whenever we purchased that date, we call it as a document date. The actual purchase date. Whatever mentioned in the invoice, on the invoice. Understood what do you mean by document date? Even though you have not received your goods 
or invoice on that particular day, but you made a purchase or the vendor made a sale to us. Okay, that date we call it as a document date. Is this clear, everyone? Yes, no. Hello. Yes, sir. Clear. Yeah, I mean, it is clear. It's a document date. And next one, we have one more field. Okay. So 30th to 6th. So what we have done? Okay. Vendor sent invoice through courier. Okay. 30th to 6th. This is supposed to be entered on 30th date. 30th date. Okay. So what we have done, but we now we are in first June. We are in first July. Okay. So here this date is nothing but means what we are supposed to do. We need to enter the transaction on 30th of June, 30th of June, but we missed to enter. We missed to enter. We missed to enter that particular date, 30th date. But even though we are in 1st July, for example, even though we are in 1st July, but what we have done, user has done is, user has done is, he has posted 0106, sorry, 30th, 06, 2023. Means the posting date. Actually, we are in 1st of July, but we are entering on 1st of July, but we are changing the posting date. Why? Because we have received the invoice yesterday. That is on 30th June. We have received 30th June. We have received, but we forget to enter or some other reason we have not able to enter. And we are recording the transaction on 1st of July. But even though we are entering on 1st of July, so we need to hide that we are entering on 1st of July. What we made is we, we have entered the transaction on 30th, we have taken, we have changed the posting date. We have changed the posting date to 30th of July. Sorry, 30th of June. Is this clear? Any questions? In this particular posting date and document date. We can change document date. We can change posting date. Is this clear? We can change documented date and we can change posting date there is one I mean, more yes sir if, if we are uh, uh like you know if we are trying to uh close ap books for example workday one ap books will be closed correct so in this case if we want to book any ap related entries then what will be the case that's what we, the, the books will be open right the gl side the books will be open till whatever date as per the company to company. They will close workday one evening, late evening. The books will be closed. And some organization, they will close to workday two. Clear. So at that particular point of time, you are in 1st of July or 2nd of July. But still, you need to enter the books. Posting date would be on 30th of June, last day. Because this particular transactions, whatever you are entering, that will be related to that particular month. Okay. Okay, unless until the books are opened for June month, till that date, we can enter the entries. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So here we can change two dates here, document date and posting date. If the books are opened for June month. Clear? In end user company, what GL will, GL people, GL team will control this posting date column. They will open and they will close the periods. Clear that we will discuss in future. For example, I'll show you one more date we have. Slash FB03. Like to check any company codes are there. No entries are there. Because actually the server got crashed. Whatever data we had earlier, that entire thing was 
let me check any other entries. It's our data, data. I'll show you. Check it, check it. For example, I'm opening one entry. See here. In this particular thing, you can see, you can see here, document date is something different. See here, document date, you can find it. You can see here document date, posting date, and entry date. Clear document date, posting date, and entry date. You know what do you mean by document date? Whenever we purchase goods or services, so that date, whatever it is mentioned on the invoice, so that date is nothing but a document date. And what is the posting date? Posting date is nothing but when we are recording, not when. The day actually we, we are supposed to enter the transaction. So that date we are calling it as a posting date. But actually when we have recorded the transaction, we are supposed to enter the transaction on which date we are supposed to enter? Before month end. Before month. No, actually, uh, yeah, that is nothing but we are in 1st of July, but yeah. that has to be entered in 30th of June. Okay, but we missed out. And on yeah. 1st of July, what we have done is we have changed the date of 1st July and we have taken 30th of June, 30th of June. So that is called a posting date. But whatever may be the date, whatever may be the date. Okay, here you said that, okay, your manager assigned 60 invoices to you. He has given 60 invoices to punch on that particular day. And what you have done is you have posted 55 invoices. You have posted 55 invoices on that particular day. You missed out five invoices to post, five invoices to record. Okay. And you thought that, okay, my manager won't ask. My manager won't ask. What I'll do is I'll come tomorrow early. I'll log in tomorrow early. And what I'll do, whatever pending invoices are there, whatever pending invoices are there, I, I'll book it tomorrow. Okay, by changing the posting date. So it will be shown the posting date as an yesterday's date only. So how my manager will caught? Because all the 55 transactions I have posted with yesterday means yesterday date posting date will be there. Correct. But other five invoices also, what I did is I have trying to post tomorrow or you can take yesterday. I am supposed to post all the 60 invoices yesterday. Okay, due to some reasons, I have posted only 55 invoices with yesterday's posting date. Okay, and I said my manager that I have posted all the 60. He won't do immediate audit on the by EOD, right? So what we did is we have logged in early today because we know that we know that yesterday documents are supposed missed five documents are missed to post. Clear. So what we have done is what we have done is we have change it the posting date in the system as soon as you log in it will show which posting date by default it is showing today's date means it's today's a summer date, date. 31 6 so what i did i have changed 29 6 2023 posting date so if i post this transaction suppose the entry is five enters it will show posting date it will show it as a 29 6 but actually I am posting on 30th of June. I am posting on 30th. So I feel that, okay, my manager won't caught because I'm not changing the posting date. I'm changing, I'm taking the posting date as in yesterday. When we he generate the books on which date posting date, as per the posting date, what are the transactions are booked on 30th of June, then automatically it will show your yesterday's 55 and today's five books, five, five transactions also. But where the auditor will caught in the sense, even though whatever may be posting date you have taken, 
whatever may be the posting date you have taken. So here, it the system will capture the system server date. The SAP captures the server date. We can manipulate at a document date and posting date, but we can't manipulate the entry date. By default, it will take system server date, which means you change the posting date as in 29th, but the system date, it will show clearly 30th of June, you have booked the transaction with the time. This is nothing but your server date and server time. We can't manipulate this date and this time. Hope you got my point. So anyone can bluff anywhere, but in SAP, everything we can't bluff anywhere or any system. In any other, other ERP, is, it is possible. But in SAP, accurate, that's the reason. The main feature, the main feature of SAP is the accuracy. It plays a vital role in accuracy because it will give you the accurate results. The user may try to bluff, but the system won't. Any questions on this particular system? So here we have entry date, clear? So as I said that, so on which date we are showing it, it is called entry date. Right, everyone, any questions on this? Yes, no. It means in this SAP, we can't hide any point anything, or any transaction. Anything, anything, anything we can't. Only by timing, probably we may do it, but one or the other day we will cut. That's the reason it will generate whatever reports, it will generate accurate reports. Any questions here? Understood? So here, what is this 29.6? This is nothing but your document date. 30th 6, 2022 is your posting date. Probably we have changed, but we can't change entry date, which will be captured by system. Right? So whatever. So we call it as a document date is also known as a vendor invoice date. Okay. Next one, on which day we are recording, even though we have supposed to update on 30th 6, we are updating on 1st June, but we are taking posting data on 30th 6. So that is called ledger updation date or posting date. Next one, 17. This is captured by, we won't enter this. This is captured by system. So write down, write down. Trans document date. Transaction. Occurred date, transaction occurred date between, between company and party is known as, is known as document date, document date. Next one, posting date. Posting the date. Okay. The date will be used. The date will be used to, re to record. Ledger updating date. In SAP system. The ledger updation date or nothing but recording of books. In manual and manual we call it as a Recording of books. Next one, entry date. The date will be captured. This is very, very important entry date. You can put a star mark. The date will be captured. The date will be captured by the system with current date and time or or application server date and time application server date and time so what do you mean application server date and time it's normally ca capture server date and time means you are in india 
you are in India. Now your date is 31, 7 and 7 55 AM, but your server is in US. Your server is US. So almost 12 hours back, right? So if you are posting an entry and your service is in US, then the entry date would be captured according to your US date and US time, not Indian uh, time and Indian date. As per your server date and your server time, it will capture. Is that clear? So note, write down the note. This is very important. Note the entry date cannot be entered manually. Cannot be entered manually or modified or modified by the end users. Is that screen? Is that clear? Any questions on these three document date, posting date and entry date? Yes, no. Yes, yes, yes. Clear, right? So what we will do is already 756. We'll stop here itself and tomorrow we will see the most three important dates. Translation date and value date and a baseline date. And apart from that, we are going to start tomorrow the settings, basic settings. Basic settings of SAP. Okay. Any other questions before we wind up? So basic, whenever we purchase, whenever our client purchases the server, it would be empty and it will have predefined SAP standard configurations and everything, right? So whenever we visit the client place, what are the first steps before entering organization structure into the system? What are the basic pre steps we need to do here? So that we will, we will see in tomorrow session. Any questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See, again, I'm telling you before, this is very, very important for any consultant, not for end user. When we enter into end user's place, client place, before doing a configuration, what are the prerequisites we need to do? What are the prerequisites we need to do? So that we are going to discuss in tomorrow's session. Okay. Thank you very much. See you in tomorrow's session. Is that okay? Yeah, Navin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.